scrap quilts. People love them, people hate them. Which camp are you in? I propose that it's not that you hate scrap quilts or scrap quilting, but perhaps that you don't yet know how to maximize the full potential of the scrap quilt. Maybe scrap quilts are just misunderstood. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. And in today's video, I work to win you over to the scrappy side. Hang around, let's see what happens. Okay, scrap quilts, love them, hate them. I wanna talk about group number two. Those of you that think you hate scrap quilts. And I wanna know why. Is it because when I say scrap quilts, immediately what pops into your mind is an image like this, or this, or even this. All of which are beautiful quilts with their own merit, but I understand that a lot of people just can't get on with the jumble and the cacophony and the discord of all the things all together all at the same time. What if when I say scrap quilts, instead you imagine this, or this, or even this. These are all scrap quilts, but they're very different from one another. There are many ways to get a planned and unified look while using scraps. Today, I'm sharing just four simple methods or formulas to get you started. Method number one, and the easiest place to start, Use a unified background. A disparate group of scraps, a mishmash, a jumble of colors, can be pulled together and toned down by using a unified background or sashing color. Many people default to black or white. They think, oh, black or white, it'll go with everything. And that's true. It will also accentuate the differences in your fabrics. Think about when you want to make a color really stand out or pop you automatically want to put it against a really sharp contrast and using black or white does that very effectively. So instead of defaulting to black or white, consider using something a little lower contrast, navy blue, light gray, dark gray, a soft neutral, a dark neutral. Using something a little bit softer, not quite as stark, will soften the entire look of the quilt and allow the colors to blend and soften in a very pleasing way. Here are some examples. In this case, we want the colors, instead of standing out, we want them to soften and blend naturally to become more cohesive. Using these less contrasting colors will soften and unify the disparate colors in your scraps while still giving you contrast and definition. A visually textured print like grunge or a linen look or a fine micro dot can enhance this effect even more. It will blur the edges of your piecing such that your colors blend into one another more easily. Once you're confident with the unifying background method, you can branch out and make even the unifying background color scrappy. You can baby step with low volumes as in my red and white quilt that you should be seeing now and as you practice you can get bolder and bolder. Method number two and this requires a little more confidence in both yourself and in the process and it's what I call use more use more. I know I always tell you that I sort everything by color that's the way my brain works but this this is where sorting by color shines. Sorting by color makes it easy for you to grab what you need and allows you to search by the initial visual impact or read of a fabric without regard to the boundaries of designer or fabric collection or style of print. Use more, use more is two parts. Part one, more shades, more prints. If you're making a red or a red neutral quilt. Instead of using two or three reds, use 20 or 30 reds. Use as many as you have, as many as you can find. Using more prints, more fabrics, will prevent any one fabric from standing out too much and will allow the quilt, the overall look, to read as just red. Take a look as I play with some scraps for just a minute. If you put these two fabrics together, you might automatically think, oh, no, those don't go. But if you add more, 
prints, colors, variations. What happens is the differences between the two initial fabrics get filled in and blended out by the inclusion of the other fabrics. The colors all dance around with one another and the overall look is pink or orange. Whichever color you're working with, using more prints and more shades of that color will give you a better overall effect of it just being the color that you're looking for, rather than looking like disjointed separate fabrics. Use more, use more part two is use more values. Varying values in a quilt is what gives it sparkle and movement and a dynamic aspect. Varying values will give your quilt interest and make your choices look intentional rather than haphazard. In the art world, uh, and the world in general really, color gets all the credit, but value does a lot of the heavy lifting. Take a look at this quilt. It's entirely blue. Every fabric in this quilt is blue, but look at the value. You see the distinctions because there are varying values. It's dynamic and there's movement and your eye travels around the quilt even though it's all blue. This yellow quilt is probably my favorite example of what value can do in a quilt. It's all yellow. Every fabric in there is yellow, but you see the shape, you see the movement, you see the design because of the varying values. And here's one more where they've worked with the values to create a gradient and then those little chartreuse slices in each one create the swooping movement that you see in the entire piece. It's all about value. That could be any color. That could be blues with purple running through it. It could be orange with bright yellow running through it instead of that chartreuse. But the technique is the same. See, color gets the credit, but value Value is where the dynamics lie. And this last one is a stunner. It's differing colors and differing values. And it's so dynamic. You see the effect of use more, use more. So many colors, so many values, but designed in such a way that it's effective and it works and it doesn't look messy or jumbled or really scrappy at all. Method number three is use fewer. I know, I just told you use more, use more, but hang with me. What I mean by use fewer is use fewer hues. Use fewer colors, limit your color palette. Greens and purples, reds and blues, orange and yellow, red and white, blue and white, whatever your color palette is, if you can limit it to two to three colors, you will have a more cohesive look with scraps than if you put all the colors in all the quilts. Using just two or three colors gives you a boundary and can be very calming. I get a lot of compliments and remarks about the purple and green quilt behind me. And the reason this quilt is so effective is because while there are 100 plus different greens and 100 plus different purples in that quilt, it's still just a green and purple quilt. All the values are mixed together so that there's a lot of movement, but the colors are separated and they're separated by that red in the center, which I absolutely love. Red is a neutral. Thank you, Freddie Moran. When you look at it, visually, it's a purple and green quilt. But then when you really look at it, you see that there are dozens and dozens of different fabrics and different values within the quilt, and that makes it interesting. Here are some more samples of two color quilts or two to three color quilts. This one with the blue and the orange. Blue and orange are complements, so it's going to be very vibrant. This one combines the unifying background with the use more prints, use more values, but it also limits the color palette to just that hot pink, bright lime green, and gray. Here's a classic blue and yellow, varying values, varying prints and patterns, limited color palette. Now method number four. Method number four can stand alone or be combined with any of the above methods or formulas. Method number four is cut it smaller. Bonnie Hunter is famous for saying, if it's still ugly, cut it smaller. Scrap quilts really shine and look planned and unified when what you see first is color and value. You don't see individualized print first. The tulip pink quilts with the huge pieces and the large scale prints are absolutely stunning. But what you see when you look at one of those quilts is that large graphic impact of the singular design. When you're working with a scrap quilt and trying to get a unified planned look, what you want to see is color or value. 
You don't want any one thing to stand out because that disrupts the flow and makes it obvious that one fabric is different from the others. I have a couple of examples here. This fabric is a calf dot. It's beautiful. And if you use it in a big piece, it's going to look like this giant polka dot. But if you cut it in a tiny little strip mixed in with all your other fabrics, what you're going to see is this burgundy color. And the hot pink dot will lighten it up a little bit, but what you'll read is this dark red color. This doesn't always work. If you're working with a large scale print, it might not work because when you cut it smaller, you're going to have a piece that's green and a piece that's pink or orange, but you're not going to have a unified look. When you cut this in tiny pieces, it's going to show very differently because this little half square triangle is going to be green and neutral and a half square triangle cut from over here is going to be pink and neutral. If you're looking for pinks, you can't use the greens. So be careful of large scale prints, but don't be afraid of them. Sometimes when you cut them down, really interesting things happen. Scrap quilts really shine when what you see is mainly color and visual texture rather than the defined print. You maximize this by using smaller pieces. And this works because when you see all the small pieces, your eye will read the color before it reads the distinct shapes. We all know the disappearing nine patch, right? You make a nine patch, you cut it crossways, both ways across the center, and you rearrange the blocks to get a dynamic result. This in itself is cutting it smaller. You've cut up those center squares such that they dance around the quilt in much smaller little blocks and it gives your quilt a great deal of movement. But what happens if you make your starting block, your starting nine patch smaller and you cut that even smaller? more movement, less distinction. So you see that red and white dancing around the quilt and you see the varying shades of blue and the varying values of blue rather than just seeing these individual blocks that may or may not look so great together. When you cut them smaller and you move them around, what your eye reads is value and color rather than the distinct patterns. Easy Street is a great example of this. So let's recap. Method number one, a unifying background or sashing color. Don't just think black and white. A tonal print or a softer near solid can work wonders and be quite nuanced. Number two, use more, use more. More prints, more shades, more values equals more interest, more sparkle, and less disparity between your varying prints. Number three, use fewer. Use a limited color palette. Two to three colors is very calming while still leaving lots of room for creativity. And lastly, number four, cut it smaller. Smaller pieces allow the color and the value to be the dominant characteristics rather than the individual prints. It will keep them from contending and fighting with one another. I'm sure you've noticed from my samples and from what I've said that you can mix and match any of these scrap formulas to make the unified and planned beautiful quilt that you want to make. Have I made you a believer yet? Give one of these methods a try for yourself and let me know how it goes. You might be surprised and I really hope that you are. If you are already a lover of all things scrap, I hope I've given you some new ideas and new things to think about and tools to play with. So scraps. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Let me know why in the comments below. And is it something that I have addressed in these formulas and methods? Or is it something else entirely? I want to know and I want to chat about it. So leave me a comment and hit all the buttons like, subscribe, share, ring that little bell. And regardless of whether you are Camp Scrappy or Camp No Way, I hope that you never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.